So Lost is proudly presented by Landers Fiat in Benton, Arkansas. For preferred pricing on your new Fiat, mention So Lost, then hit the road with us. Well, we're in Greensboro, uh, just, just outside of Greensboro, and we're at the silo, and it's uh, Tawana Harris's farm. So we're just checking out the Alabama silo. I'd have to say it's like uh, seven years ago now, maybe, that I first saw off in the highway. I said, what is that crumpled thing? You know, up the... So we came out up to it, and it was a cloudy day. And uh, I got permission and photographed it right away. Uh, I thought it looked fantastic and, you know, completely sculptural and reminding me of what it could be like an early Frank Gehry project. Well, it's an unusual project because it's a structure that hundreds of people pass each month without looking twice at it. And it took Tim's sensibility to place and form to realize that it was something extraordinary. So you get off the street and you come around to the other side and the form has this amazing, poetic, powerful presence. And once you look at it as an object rather than just as a, a ruined silo, um, you start to see what Tim sees in it. hit by a tornado and uh, so it's sort of been slowly falling since then and I guess since I my photographs from six years ago show that it has fallen some so three years ago I when I was talking with the owner Tawana about some scrappers were going to come out and scrap it. at least that's what I heard I asked her I go well, wait don't scrap it what would what, what could I buy it from you and she was like yeah so how much did your silo cost you you want another price? <laughs> um, well, she threw at me two thousand, and so I didn't. I didn't uh, try to um, bar bargain any, uh, her down or anything. I, so I said, okay. So I don't know if that was scrap. I paid too much. I didn't research what scrap would have been. So I gave her two thousand, and that was that. I had three years to move it off the property, and then I'm going to rent. If I just still don't have it off, I'm going to pay two hundred bucks a year to rent for rent, renting the space. But I just picked up the silo itself. As an architectural photographer, I've gotten assignments to photograph uh, contemporary new buildings. So I traveled to the assignment. Um, they've been all over the country. And so you go out there for two days, three days. Sometimes I've been on assignments for a week. Some have been fantastic. I used to think that architects are some of the great artists. So I've been really inspired by um, and, and fortunate to have been brought into the design world, I think. The pole here is our camera. It's a surveillance camera that um, we've got it cranked up to shooting every 12 seconds. We've had it up for a year and a half. Uh, I've got another camera going in Gould, Arkansas, up on a grain separator. Just keep coming, that's pretty nice though. Let me, I want to see it go out of focus and see what goes out of focus. How much more time before you start setting the lights? 
I don't know. I might have to come down and warm my fingers up because I can hardly feel what I'm doing right now. Oh, shoot. I can send you up my gloves. That won't help. Uh-oh. The serial nature of it, I think, is what makes it so interesting, is what's different about this million frames. Well, think of the casual snap shooter and think of the photographers we admire. What makes them great? Obsession. What's the obsession? It's returning to a few ideas or a few places and getting underneath the surfaces and mining the depths of those places, and that's exactly what Tim's done here. It's funny, I was thinking about it today, was that uh, with all the photographs now that I have with the, with, with the surveillance camera and stuff, I, uh, it sort of lives with me back in Little Rock. <laughs> Don't have to be out here, I sort of have this life with it um, through all this imagery. <laughs>